So let's talk about one of the other determinants, which is side effect profile. So tell us about the side effect profile of Viliparib, and we'll go back and forth, side effects of Viliparib versus uh, Niraparib. So you want to talk about just in the maintenance setting, or are you talking about it in the, during chemo? Because when I use it in the clinic, it doesn't have to be that complicated. When you no, talk no, to your you're patient, talking. there are side effects to medications, and you're going to talk to her about what they are. Okay, so then, so okay, so if we're at the point that you want to have that conversation, yes. you've then cleared chemo, right? Because that because the point of discussion with side effects with uh, starting that first line therapy, you're talking about the interaction between chemotherapy and that it's side a good effects, distinction. and the combination with the side effects that you get from from the PARP inhibitor. So we were happy to see in Vilia that really the side effect profile was not that much different on chemotherapy. There was a little bit more um, thrombocytopenia and higher grade thrombocytopenia that was seen uh, with that. With in the combination. In the combination, but once we transitioned over into the maintenance phase, it was very much what we saw, maybe even a little less, from the hematologic standpoint uh, than uh, we've seen in the other trials that have done use these for agents. Is that because they'd all been dose reduced by the time they got to the maintenance phase? So, so actually they were dose increased, right? Because we started at 150 and then we transitioned to 300 and then we went to 400 during that. Uh, so if you had a dose reduction in the, in the, in the combination phase, did you go immediately to this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and we, and so, and we, and Thank we learned as we were doing the trial, we learned that it was it's hard not to go. Related. Yeah, and we learned that when you know the chemotherapy effects actually persist a little bit, and so we built in this um, this two week transition phase where we stepped up the dose, and then we two weeks later stepped up the dose as long as it was tolerated. Now, if they didn't tolerate the three, the four hundred, we went back to the three hundred and kept it there. But we transitioned that step so that we could get back up to full dose. So again, that's very different, right? You taught us that you have to either make the decision in the beginning to start Beverparp, and after the chemotherapy, if it's gonna be a maintenance strategy, Prima. So tell us about the side effect profile, either one of you, of Niraparib. So from a non-hematologic standpoint, uh, it's very, very similar to the other PARP inhibitors with very common but low severity, nausea, fatigue, vomiting, um, about 25% can get um, dyspepsia and diarrhea, very, very similar. Neuroprobe has uh, the unique toxicity. It's not very common, about 15% where you can get hypertension. Not incredibly high grade, but you can get it. And about 10% of patients can have uh, tachycardia or palpitations um, because of the uh, serotonergic impact of, of neuroprobe. But so those none are none of that in Viliparib, right? No adrenergic. No, we didn't see no, that. No. Okay, yeah. keep going. That's a very unique thing yeah. to, to neuroprobe. Um, and they're very manageable, and you can just counsel patients regarding them. From a hematologic standpoint, uh, the, uh, it is a little bit more hematologically toxic than the other PARP inhibitors, especially Viliparib, even with the individualized dosing, which is way better, but it's still a little bit higher. You see a little bit more grade three uh, neutropenia, um, you see a little bit more grade three um, thrombocytopenia than you do. It's about 6% with the other PARP inhibitors. Here it's about 13% when you would do the adjustment. Tell them about the individualized dosing, what that is. Individualized dosing is, uh, uh, so that originally Niraparib started at 300 milligram flat dose once daily and, and, and notably had difficulty with thrombocytopenia related to um, weight, which is 77 kilograms. So if you were lower than 77 kilograms or you had a baseline platelets less than 150 um, thousand, either one, then you are at much higher risk, about a 40% risk of having this um, severe thrombocytopenia. And so if you have either one of those, you start a neuroparib dose at 200. Right. And when that was adjusted, and you presented this data at SGO, when that was adjusted in the PRIMA study um, about halfway through, you can really see a dramatic difference in the hematologic profile um, mm -hmm. between the two phases of, of the study. And so it's, it, it looks much similar now to Olaparib and Rucaparib, just a smidgen higher, but I don't think clinically relevantly higher. Um, so, so we'll see, I think, that breakdown coming. It wasn't presented at this meeting. It was just the overall toxicity. So you still saw about 30% of patients with grade 3 or higher thrombocytopenia. But I think once we see the breakdown, you'll see that come down. There, there's been a lot of anxiety about starting at 200. I've tried to teach people that the, the average dose, the most common dose, 200 anyways. So, so the, the dose intensity really is only on the first cycle. Because you're going to get to 200 in most patients at the second dose, the second month, second cycle, and you're going to do it two ways. You're going to figure it out based on the weight and the baseline platelet count, or you're going to suffer the brain damage 
of, of thrombocytopenia and, 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 and get there. So, so the relative dose intensity over many cycles is really relatively so I just wanted to point out that, you know, the, I really like this, this concept. It was a, you know, this was a, a, an adverse event we didn't anticipate when we first started. We went back and we looked back at the pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics of the drug. We had some of that data, learned about the volume of distribution, learned about how the concentrations were, might be in the bone marrow, learned about how that might be mitigated by adjustments, yes. set up a, a strategy for it, retrospectively looked and looked like it might, might work, and then prospectively validated it. That's just, that's really good stuff. You're welcome.